Salutations. Welcome to Strategy and Analysis Center. Today's briefing, KA-52K attack helicopters for China. Why would China want it? The PLA needs an attack helicopter to support amphibious assault and may need a more survivable heavy attack helicopter to support land operations in a high threat environment. And it may need these capabilities sooner rather than later. This briefing will look at why China might consider obtaining the KA-52K to satisfy an emerging capability requirement and why other platform options may not suffice. The roles of attack helicopters are to provide close air support for ground forces through rockets and guns, long range anti-armor strike through anti-tank guided missiles, and in some cases an air to air capability through air to air missiles and guns, and or an anti-ship capability through anti-ship missiles. Many countries operate attack helicopters, either in the Army, Aviation or Air Force, and the following are some selected platforms. Starting with the AH-64, which is the world benchmark in attack helicopters and used by many countries, including the US, UK, Taiwan, India, South Korea and Japan. The AH-1 Zulu is essentially only used by the US Marine Corps and the only one of the four here that has a folding rotor system. The Eurocopter Tiger, used by Germany, France, Spain and Australia, although Australia is replacing its Tigers with the AH-64, and the Z-10, which is only used by the PLA. In terms of the dimensions, the length here is the fuselage and the tail rotor, and the width being over the wings, except for the H1 Zulu, with the width over the folding rotor system. As mentioned in the introduction, we can be confident the PLA has a capability requirement for an attack helicopter for amphibious operations, operating both off amphibious ships and shore bases to support ground force amphibious combined arms brigades and see my briefing on the amphibious battalions and marine brigades. Note the marines are standing up an aviation brigade. To satisfy these requirements, the helicopter will need to be marinized and highly preferable to have a folding main rotor system to gain maximum benefits in terms of numbers to operate off the PLA's LHOs. A further capability requirement could be for a heavier and more survivable attack helicopter than the Z-10 to support land operations in a high threat environment. This would require a larger helicopter with better protection. In the absence of evidence suggesting a new attack helicopter program for the PLA, the most likely candidates for these capability requirements are an evolved Z-10 or an existing foreign platform. If converting to Z-10, the PLA would at the very least need to develop a folding rotor system for it and marinize the platform. They would also likely need to enlarge the fuselage and provide more armor protection, likely requiring the installation of more powerful engines. In other words, something broadly similar to what the United States Marine Corps did with the original IH-1 Cobra of the US Army. Ruling out the IH-1Z Zulu, uh, for obvious reasons, the only serious existing foreign contender is the KA-52K, with a length of 13.9 metres and a width of 4.3 metres folded. Its maximum takeoff weight is around 12,200 kilograms, which includes a significant weight in armour protection of the crew and strength and landing gear. For comparison, the KA-52 is then in a similar weight category to the AH-64. Its 30mm gun that can engage armoured targets out to around 1500 metres and soft skin targets and infantry out to around 4000 metres uses the same ammunition as the PLA's 30mm weapons. In Russian service, it can be armed with rockets, anti-tank guided missiles, air to air missiles and anti-ship missiles. Note it has four hard points by six on the standard KA-52s. In PLA service, it would likely have the same weapon options. In terms of integration to PLA service, the KA-52K uses the same family of engines as the PLA's MI-171 transport helicopters, that is the Klimov VK-2500s. Additionally, the PLA has a great deal of experience working with marinized helicopters with coaxial rotor systems, such as the KA-28 and 31. So integrating the KA-52s into PLA service should not be too challenging. 
Looking at the present and future, there is no suggestion China does not want to continue to work with Russia on helicopter capability developments. In fact, Russia and China are already cooperating on a heavy lift helicopter program. So a joint program to develop or introduce a heavy attack helicopter is plausible. What of the Ka-52's recent performance in conflict? It is difficult to know how effective the Ka-52 has been in operations in Ukraine, as all information is open source, with pro-Russian sites likely stating the helicopter is doing well, and pro-Ukraine and NATO sites stating it is a failure. What is highly likely is that any identified deficiencies, whether that be in the platform itself or in tactics, would be addressed by Russia and possibly China. In summary, should the PLA decide to adopt the Ka-52K, they would get an attack helicopter that is well protected, ready for shipborne operations, marinized and with folding rotors, and has been tested in combat, whose main gun uses the same ammunition as the PLA uses on its 30mm weapons, and one that uses engines already in large-scale service in the PLA. That concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers, so please subscribe, like, and share. Until next time, Valeta Serai.